Hello, welcome to day five of the International Nature Journaling Conference. I'm Roseanne Hansen. I'm here to introduce you to adding landscapes quickly to your field notes and nature journals. I am a naturalist, an artist and explorer. I'm also an author. I've recently come out with a book called Nature Journaling for a Wildlife, which is an eight week course in how to get started nature journaling. I am also the art and science coordinator for the Desert Laboratory on Tumamoc Hill, which is part of the University of Arizona. I've been keeping nature journals and field notebooks for over 35 years. And only recently have I started adding uh, more art to it. I am not a trained artist, I'm self-taught. So what I'm going to do today is walk you through the, the quick steps that I take to, to add landscapes, which are, which are kind of intimidating. So I'll work on helping you identify what to draw, how to distill them down into shapes and get it quickly onto paper. I'm going to be uh, posting this on my website as well. So exploringoverland.com and look for the field arts section. I'm introducing the Field Arts Institute for helping people add field sketching, cartography, and many other field arts to their repertoire for recording their adventures and explorations in the wild. So what we'll do today is I'll take you on a virtual field trip and walk you through the, the different steps, as I said, and by the end, you should feel much more comfortable um, with the thought and technique process for capturing landscapes. I'm going to uh, show you some examples first uh, on a slideshow, and then we'll go on the, the virtual field trip. So hang on uh, while I get this going, maybe grab your field notebooks, your nature journals, and a pencil or pen and some watercolors if you're into that. And maybe do some quick warm up exercises while I get this going. All right, sketching landscapes in the field, how to choose a view, simplify details, and sketch quickly. I'll jump right in. This is a uh, Dombo Hippo Pool in Botswana. I sketched this quickly during a lunch break and I did add the color later in camp. But you can see I didn't try to draw every single detail. I wanted to capture this huge pool and the fact that there were hippos, it is called um, Dombo Hippo Pool. I wanted to capture that and, and maybe some of the floating crocodiles and um, also add some, some other details. So, I quickly sketched the shape of the, the, the pond and left room for some things later. I took notes. One of the things I'll be walking you through is that this is about learning to be a better naturalist. Nature journaling is not about perfect art. It is about exploring, learning. So what I like to say is we are drawing to learn. We're not learning to draw here. It will be an outcome, you will learn to draw, but don't get hung up on perfect pretty pictures. It will come and I will be showing you how to get that going. Let's, let's look at another one. And this is in Namibia. And I wanted to capture the, the different types of dunes we were seeing in the, the southern region. So I focused on those beautiful S shapes of the large dunes. Uh, I sketched four different views that I was seeing throughout the day. I didn't do these all at once. I did them in linear order. So from left down and then around. And as you can see, they're, they're not super detailed. I did use color to um, soup them up a little bit. So because especially those, those incredible red dunes in Namibia. But I was curious why sometimes the dunes were red and in the same area, they were uh, a very beautiful tan color. It of course has to do with the geology. But that's a, another example. Uh, notice the notes, uh, questions, what are these things? What's, what causes these fairy circles, for example? Uh, it's about being a better naturalist. So taking notes and 
uh, lots of information I'll be covering as well. Here's an example from a virtual field trip I did a couple of weeks ago with uh, Ryan Patterson of Stanford University. We took the group on a virtual field trip to uh, Lake District National Park in England. And this example shows uh, how I chose a landscape view. I was most interested in those trees and the, the beautiful rock walls. So that's what I focused on for this sketch. You can see on my page, I always start with metadata. Metadata is data that goes with other data. Your main data, of course, are the things that you're seeing, the notes on nature, birds, plants, wildlife, what's happening, who's doing what. So the, the metadata is the data that supports that. So that would be the place, the time, the date. Um, by place, I mean not just the place name, but the coordinates, latitude and longitude. Uh, the sunrise, sunset, I put the weather. All of these things might be relevant weeks, day, years down the road if I'm accessing my journals, say, for working on a book. And I, I noticed that, yes, I saw uh, this particular uh, bird, a uh, common red start at the Lake District at this location. I, I would need to know exactly where that was and what time of year to make that data relevant for future use. Uh, I have used my nature journals, my field notes uh, for books that, that we've written. My husband and I have written uh, nature guides. I go back and I check things, uh, important details, when plants are blooming, when birds are breeding. So that's an important thing to note. So you can see how I, I narrowed this wide view down. I focused on that beautiful curve of the creek sketched in the trees and, and the wall. And I really left it at that. I put a, a bounding box around it, which really helps. And then I added some detail on the foreground to, to give it a little bit of, of uh, interest and to ground it. And here's what Ryan did of the same scene on our virtual field trip. He went for a vertical view and he liked that grass clump in the foreground there. So he chose that. Uh, and, and just really grabbed very quickly, this probably took him 10 minutes, uh, the same scene, but covered it a little differently. This is also a sketch from Ryan, one of his, his field trips in the Sierras that he uh, led with Stanford University. And I love the way he focused on the large geologic feature in the valley below. The trees, he didn't make them as uh, prominent so that the focus was on that beautiful geologic form. And I love the way he did the sky and just gave a great overall picture of what the landscape was where he was at the time. And that's why we wanna add these to our journals. Here's a full page of how Ryan approaches little landscape does, as John Muir Laws says in a, a nature journal page. Uh, he uses lots of different little landscapes and thumbnails even, those are sometimes quite small, maybe a couple of inches, to quickly put in some interesting details, pulling out uh, interesting things without having to draw the entire scene. I really like this page. Here's a quick capture I did of a little flood in uh, a normally dry creek bed in Tucson, Arizona this winter. winter. Uh, that's an unusual event uh, when our creeks suddenly start flowing after a winter rain or a summer rain. This was in the winter. I wanted to put that in my journal for that day. It, and so I used just pen and ink on this one, capturing the, the big shapes. I got the dark mountains in the background, the kind of dramatic clouds. And it didn't go in for a super lot of detail. Did I put in all those buildings, the telephone poles? No, I left those out. I focused on the, the flowing creek and that gave me a nice little, little uh, landscape for, for the journal that day. 
I love this one. This is by a, a gentleman who is frequently contributing to the Nature Journal Club on Facebook, um, Xian Shen. I love how he distilled this complex horseshoe bend in Utah on the, Col I think it's the Colorado River, uh, just beautifully with focusing on the big shapes. He didn't try to do everything all the way back to the background. He got that lovely curve, didn't try to add a lot of detail down below, right over the edge of the cliff. So you got the sense of space down there and you can see it moving away into the, uh, where the, where the river goes fore and aft. It really works well. Again, he didn't try to do everything, a beautiful pen and ink rendering. So these are my five uh, landscape sketching tips that we will continue to, to work on and I will demonstrate. So you are seeking to capture, not copy the exact landscape. This is not a studio project where you are rendering a very large, perfect painting. You are capturing it to add interest and information to your uh, field notes and nature journal. When you start out, what you're doing is looking for the big shapes. You want to study your landscape first and don't think about drawing mountains or, oh my gosh, I have to draw those complex trees. Think of them as shapes only and big ones, like maybe three or four, five per view. I'll show you kind of how that works. And then to get me started on the page, that's always the hardest thing, I think, that our teachers tend to forget. It's really hard for beginners to figure out where do I start on the page to make sure I don't completely mess up the proportions. So I use the uh, little dots, I call it dot mapping. I got this idea from Mark Taro Holmes, who is a well-known urban sketcher. Um, he, he maps out the landscape, basically those big shapes I was talking about, with little dots on his paper to just feel out, make sure he gets the proportions and things right before he lays down the main sketches. So use little dots to map out your sketch. They don't even show afterwards. And then when you're, you're filling it in, I, I go for kind of messy, sketchy lines. And that gives your, your sketches a lot of energy and flow instead of trying to do really static, careful lines, which is another style that can work. But if you're trying to do this in the field and do it quickly, the kind of messy line that just your sketching approach works really well. Uh, it gives it energy and, and I, I like the way it looks. So that's my style. And then the final thing, which I have to work on a lot, is uh, be sure to stop. Don't overwork your sketches. That is super important. I've ruined so many things by going back and noodle, 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 noodle until it's just blah. So capture, not copy. Look for big shapes. Use little dots to map out your sketch. Go for messy lines and be sure to stop. Don't overwork it. A little bit, I'm going to say a little bit about kit and what you need. Kit meaning the equipment or gear that, that you want to take with you. You don't need a lot. Basically, all you need is a journal, paper, pen or pencil. If you're going to add watercolor, then a water brush and a, a mini paint kit is really all you need. I carry, here's my basic, basic kit. My whole paint kit fits into that little red bag there. It is a, a little you know, candy tin that I've put half pans, uh, or actually those might be full pans of paint. I only use three main colors. It's called a triad. I use a, a literally I, I go for a, a cool blue, a cool magenta, not a red, but a magenta, which in this case is quinacridone rose. My blue is manganese blue, and then a neutral yellow, which in this case is aureolum. And I can make any colors I need with those plus two other colors. 
burnt sienna and a warm, very, very dark blue called Endanthrum blue. And all of this information is on my website, so you can get these on um, my resources. You don't have to try to scribble these down right now. But those colors, I can do anything from black as blacks, beautiful grays, purples, many different greens, and I'll be demonstrating that. And that's just a tiny little, tiny, tiny little thing. I have a, a choroplast sheet uh, that sits in the back of my journal and that holds everything so I can walk and, and hold it right there and sketch and paint as I go. And I can leave it all out while I walk. I always have binoculars. I always have a little mini ruler and the, the, the black squares are just cut up yoga mat that goes in my field bag that I can use for sitting down to when I wanna draw something a little, take a little bit longer so the rocks aren't so painful. So really that's, that's all you need is to, to sketch. And Ryan uh, Patterson sketches with a, a ballpoint pen, literally a Bic, um, as well as a, a fountain pen. I use fountain pens with waterproof ink, which I really like. Uh, pencil, if I'm, if I'm going to be sketching in my, my journal, I don't tend to use pencil because my journal has watercolor paper, which I find um, the pencil on it smears over time. Uh, but use whatever you want. There is no right or wrong. Just don't get too bogged down right now in a zillion different colors and giant kit because if it takes you too long to set up when you're out in the field, it's, uh, I feel like, uh, then you won't spend as much time sketching and, and observing. And that's why we're out there. That is what nature journaling, taking field notes is all about. It's about becoming a great naturalist and using these field arts to enhance your knowledge. So field art sketching, uh, making maps, painting, uh, things like that. So don't get too hung up on lots of tools at this point. All right, well, we're going to go on a field trip now. I hope you're ready. We are going to be uh, going to Kochi Stronghold in the Dragoon Mountains in southeastern Arizona. This is about, I think it's about 70 miles or so uh, southeast of Tucson, Arizona. This time of year, it's beautiful in the morning, nice and cool, uh, but it's going to be hot in the daytime, so we're getting an early start here. It's a beautiful desert grassland country. It's about 4,500 feet, maybe a little less than that, um, a little more depending. This camp, I think, is about 4,800 feet, um, one of our favorite camps. And what does this landscape look like? It's beautiful. Grasslands, oak woodlands, dramatic rock formations. This is uh, known as Cochise's stronghold because Cochise, the Apache leader, uh, used this area to hide out when they were uh, being pursued by the U.S. government. And so uh, it's thought that he also may be buried up here in these mountains, which are just beautiful. Here's a longer view one morning, beautiful sunrise. You can see our camp under the oak trees there. And here's some detail of what, what it looks like when you hike up into the stronghold area. Beautiful, uh, smooth, roundy rocks, lots of beautiful uh, green and, and uh, blue lichens. Uh, there was a little bit of water after a rain on this trip. So it's just beautiful. So how do you pick what to draw? That's actually the biggest thing because you get overwhelmed. So what I like to do is choose a, a broader landscape view like, like this one. I really like this, this view here because it, it shows the dramatic grasslands which are, uh, have, are sweeping plains that lead up to these Sky Island mountains. And, and so I would probably do that in my journal to kind of set the scene and I think that's what I'm going to draw. And then if I have time later, I would probably do a little detail, probably of just those boulders uh, on the same page or maybe another page. 
And I think I'll just demonstrate that for you. So let's head over to that in just a moment. Okay, so get out your sketching tools and, and, and journal and, and maybe join me if you wanna to try to sketch along here because I'm going to put up the photo and then you'll see my journal here. There we go. So that's the scene I wanna draw. And I'm gonna slide over here and put that on this page. Now, you can see on this page here that I've pre-filled in the information, the metadata about the Kochi stronghold and the camp where, where we're at for our virtual field trip. Uh, it's uh, June 5th, so tonight's going to be full moon and the, the moonrise is going to be at 7.41 this evening and sets at, at 5.11 the next day. It's mostly clear. It's uh, sun, sunrise is going to be at 5.17 and sunset at, at 7.08 p.m. Here's the coordinates. I always put in uh, weather. Uh, this is uh, the cloud cover. So there's a little bit of clouds. That's a symbol for that. The wind is coming from the southwest. And this is a symbol for the type of clouds. Um, these are, and I keep a cheat sheet in my journal here um, of how to write the cloud symbols. So that symbol is uh, cirrostratus. So I know what, what that means later. And we're at 4,896 feet. It's 60 degrees or first thing in the morning, beautiful. And um, this symbol I use later to, um, this symbol here, I use later to uh, say what the afternoon uh, weather was. So if it gets cloudy, I might actually add little clouds over that. It's a visual and I'll put the high temperature here once I get that. Here you can see my little paint kit, how that works. I use a, a regular brush, not a water brush. Many people use the water brushes. I'm just not very good at it. And I love my, um, this is a squirrel mop, Isobay, uh, Rosemary and Co. also makes one. You can get very similar, really great one from Expeditionary Art. That's art-toolkit.com from Maria Corio. Um, so this is how I set mine up. This is the little water reservoir. So for when I'm, I'm, I'm walking, I can sketch and, and add my, my paintings right, right there. For this demo though, I'm not going to do it that way because uh, it, I can't reach my paints uh, without obscuring the view for you. So I'm going to take out my, my kit there. And let's see. So, the better metadata I put in, it's a beautiful morning. I always get warmed up by writing a little bit of prose at the beginning. So that also just grounds me, it gets me going. I don't jump straight to a drawing usually because uh, I need to empty my brain and get into the zone of field notes and nature journaling. So I wrote a little bit, it's a beautiful morning. It was cool overnight. It's going to be hot this afternoon. A ruby crown kinglets or hanging around in the trees. And on a walk, I saw mountain lion tracks, which are really common in the area. There's pretty healthy population in the dragoons nicely. There's lots of deer there. So about that landscape though. So I really love this, this view. And I'm gonna capture that. I'm probably going to put it down toward the bottom and I'm gonna give myself a little bounding box. So that, that helps me get the proportions in. And I start usually just with the sides. You don't have to do bounding boxes. That's just the way I do it. So I think what I'm gonna do is focus on part of that really cool tree and then those really nubbly shapes of the mountain 
And I do want that grassland there. So what I'm gonna do is, is load this pretty, pretty heavy toward the bottom, meaning I'm gonna put the, the trees, the tree and the, the mountains up at the upper third of, of my sketch so I can make sure I get this shape here. Now, we're gonna look at the shapes. Biggest shape for me, what I wanna capture to show I'm in a grassland, is that that grass, that sweeping grassland. So that's my biggest shape there, um, is that grass. And then the next big shape is that tree, that oak tree, that is, I believe that's an emery oak. And I'm going to just dot that in for the moment. You know what I think I'll do, it's kind of fun, is I'll, I'll probably draw that outside of the, the image a little bit to, um, or excuse me, the bounding box. So I'm giving that a little, just dot shapes right now. And I'm, as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of checking proportions here. I don't want that to take up a huge space because I also want to fit in those mountains. So those mountains are the next shape. That has only three shapes in this, this sketch. I haven't made this tree big enough, I'm noticing, uh, the way it's working here. So I'm going to make that a little bigger. Dot, 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 dot. Okay. So now my mountains, I'm going to, to bring in here. And I'm just going to sketch basic shapes right now. I'm, I'm not even sketching. I'm just sort of doing these dots so I can get dot, dot, dot. OK. And now I'm running out. So I'm going to leave that. How does that work? Hmm. I don't know. I kind of like that. I think it's going to give me the essence. I want, I want to capture the essence of this landscape. So now I'm going to do some more solid sketches. Um, with the tree, I'm going to keep it pretty loose and um, uh, not try to do a, a full closing lines here and keep it sketchy because I'm going to go back with my paints. And it's an oak tree, so it's a messy tree. But it's, it's kind of dark in this view because it's dawn. We don't have a full sunrise yet, but this tree has this great umbrella -y effect and it's got several trunks that come down, which I'm, I'm going to add here. Not, not doing too much detail. And then I want to start getting in my my grass. Now, you notice I'm not like trying to draw straight lines here. I want to show the grassland here. One thing that's showing over here in this view is way in the distance, there's the, the, the plains that go up there. The uh, slopes have small shrubs and small oaks on them. So I'm, I'm giving that just a little bit of nod there. Now let me, let me do the, these mountains and I'm, I'm going to go really sketchy here. Oh, let's get that wonderful knob. It's a little higher and not quite in proportion to the view I've got. That's okay. I'm, I'm just going to keep going with it because I want it. I want this view to be the, the silhouettes to be the main thing. And as I go over here, we got a little bit more. Less bumps, more bumps. This, this um, little mountain is actually farther away, but that doesn't show in the dawn um, so much. But I am going to do these a little darker to show them a little farther away. And they don't have a lot of detail. Uh, I'm going to do just a little bit. I'm not going to try to draw everything. Again, I'm, 
I'm capturing, I'm not copying. I'm gonna leave those pretty detailless. Now, my, I'm going to end up doing the most of the grasses with my paint, but I'm going to add some primary, just grass sketchiness here. This is tall grass. This might be layman's love grass, which is an introduced species, unfortunately. Um, but there are some natives in here as well. But that helps me set the stage for what I'm going to do with my with my um, my paints. So I, I I think I like that. I think uh, what I'm going to do now is finish this bounding box. That's going to come out there. I'm going to put this here. And uh, this challenge my straight line drawing there. Hey, that worked pretty well. Sometimes I might use a ruler, but usually not. It's okay if it's not perfect. Um, so that I think I'm going to stop there and now work on giving that a little bit of color. All right. I'm going to start with the lightest first. I'm going to do a quick wash of the grasses and just to show you how I color mix here. There's my my yellow. Now that's awfully bright. That grass is nowhere near that bright. So I warm it up with a little bit of the burnt sienna and I'm going to get a nice grassy tone there. I just added a little bit more water because I, I want the first wash to be pretty, pretty light. Oh, one thing I, I should have done, uh, spray these using a little spray bottle. You, you spray your paints first and that freshens them up a little better. So let's, let's just give this a, a wash here. I want to make it really light. So I am I am not going to make it super solid here. Almost. Yeah, I, I want a very light leaving I'm leaving some white bits because I want that. I don't want a solid, you don't want to do like color by numbers or a coloring book. Um, and even so, since I use a transparent lifting watercolors and I cover that in my book, what is that? I can sometimes go in and just <laughs> it, remove stuff use a tissue, I use my thumb, so that works there. Now, while I'm waiting for that to sort of settle, although, I don't know, I kind of like that. I'm going to add a little bit of, I added a little bit of more of the, the burnt sienna, and, and we're going to, while it's still wet, we see that's drying quickly, um, because this grass is not monotone, and see, I want to get rid of those hard edges. It's very dry here in Arizona right now, so um, things are drying quickly. Now, I'm going to leave that just to give it some texture. Okay. Now I'll be I'll be pulling up some grass and and, and kind of last. I, I'm going to leave that go for now. That's what I'm waiting for that to do. I'm, I'm going to um, just do a little hint of blue in the, the sky. And I'm, I'm wetting that first. Um, you can see there the pen was still a little bit wet because I got kind of thick. Um, I'm going to get a really pale blue of my manganese. Let's drop that in and just let it 
Barely, barely. I'm just going to let it sink down on its own a little bit, dry it a tiny bit because it's dawn and very pale. All right, now let's get that uh, dark tree going. I think what I'm going to do there, I'm going to go, you know, I'm, I, I'm not too precious about my, my paints. I kind of like having mixed marbly colors. Some people would be horrified, but I just used some of the, the cool blue, but now I'm warming it up a little bit with the dark and dantrum. And now I'm, I'm adding yellow to get a, a, a dark green. It's probably still a little bit too light, but I'm going to drop that in like so. And then we can let it dry. And when it's almost dry, we'll drop in some, some darker. I'm not, I'm not trying to fill it all the way in. All right, let's take a quick, I'm going to do a quick, uh, just a, a wash across those mountains. The mountains are that pretty pinky rhyolite, kind of orangey pink. So uh, let's mix a little orange by going with the yellow and the uh, magenta, but I'm going to make that like super watered down, like really, really watered down because I'm just gonna do a bare wash. And again, I'm, I'm gonna keep this, keeping that away from the green wet so it doesn't, uh, doesn't bleed. I'm gonna let that set now. And the farther away mountains, those are mostly, those are pretty dark. Uh, if we were there in person, you would see being farther away. I want them, I want them to blend way back in the in the background. So I'm going to do them in this this darker blue here. And there, I just added some gray to give it just a, a little bit more, push it, give it a little bit more interest and push it back as well. So I'm gonna leave those for the moment. Now let's get the grassland, the, the grass there in the foreground going. So what I've got is a mix of yellow. Actually, I went ahead and left a little bit of green in there and a tiny bit of burnt sienna. I don't like mix it all up so it's perfect. I like the little, the marbly effect. And now I'm just using the, the tip of my brush here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put that like that and then use the, the tip to draw up some of the, the grassy features. You could use a, any, you could use a, a stick, anything at hand to create this grassy look. And then since I can see a, a little bit, not, not too far, but, but from the foreground up to about the middle ground, see I'm getting this wet with clean water, it was dry. And now I'm gonna go back with my, my color. Let's let that dry a little more because what I wanna do is, is get the hint of the, the verticals. And then I, I just dipped it into the burnt sienna. You can't see that there. 
Um, these are going to disappear more as we go. But this is burnt sienna because it's the grassland is that lovely rufusy color. And see how I'm giving just this hint of the grassiness. So I'm, I'm kind of liking that. Now I'm going to darken the tree a little bit and then call it good. And I'm, I'm darkening the, the tree with, I've got the endanthrum blue. I'm going to drop the tiniest bit of, 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 of yellow in there and give that tree some, some depth by dropping the darker color in just dots like that because um, I, I don't want it to be solid again um, on that. And now let's not forget a little shadow. So we've got, I'm going to wipe that off, quickly do a, a gray. And with my little kit, that's burnt sienna, drop in a little endanthrum. That's still too brown. There's a nice gray. So let's give the, the tree its, its shadow here. And if I have time, you'll see, I, I like the, uh, I'm making a little dark green. Um, I might, might try to go back in, but this is a little landscape. So I might try to add, try to put a little clear water, but it wasn't quite clear. But I might try to add using a very dark green. I'm trying to drop in the little tree features that I see way off to give that a little bit of depth. You see how those are kind of spreading out and that helps pull you off back um, into the landscape. There's also, you know, some, some uh, darker parts of the, the mountain there. I could um, add a little bit of, of green and interest there, but I think I need to, to do what I said. Uh, remember, remember what I said, stop, don't overwork it. I think I'm in danger of doing that right now. So I'm, I'm going to leave that. That's a great little landscape veto uh, that gives the essence of what that, that place is like. If I let this dry a little bit, maybe I'll go in later and, and put in a little bit um, more of the terracotta e color like like that. See, I'm pushing it a little bit. It's, it really is a beautiful terracotta color. This looks dark right now, but it's actually gonna going to dry quite a bit lighter. And we'll go back and revisit that. Um, but in 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 person, those are, are really a beautiful terracotta -y color. Props. So that is the quick landscape veto uh, for a nature journal. Now, if I have, have time when I'm out in the field, what are some other ways I might, might approach uh, doing different, different things in the, in the journal? Here are some pages from that same uh, campsite. Uh, I was sitting there and saw a uh, kestrel sitting in the, uh, on a, a lone thorn bush in the middle of that grass field. And this kestrel was flying out, grabbing something, bringing it back to this branch and eating it. And so with my binoculars, I just, I sat on my little squares of, of, um, of old yoga mat and I glassed did a sketch, glassed, did a sketch. I, I tried to capture him. He was looking right at me. So it was, it was fun to do. Um, and I tried to do the little landscape in the background, him in the foreground and showing him as he, as he hopped out. But I was, 
I was most interested in, in also getting his details because he was being very cooperative. Uh, another way you can do a landscape, a little landscape toe, um, is to zoom in on a detail. Uh, one uh, sunset, uh, one evening when we were camping there, uh, this section of the Dragoon Mountains, there was this literally electric grenadine purple uh, pink uh, sky, like, like the most amazing electric pinky purpley. And then this rock, which I ended up calling whale rock, I noticed was really catching my eye. It had lichen on it. It looked like a whale breaching. So I did a quick capture, quick sketch of that to show, show that. That's another way to do a little landscape detail in your journal. Uh, and then more little landscape details was how the, um, what, it, what the, the plants around this area looked like, maybe some detailed plants. And as we ended that particular trip, uh, we stopped at a, a winery and uh, this was the view from the, the Rune uh, Vineyards tasting room. And so I did, while I was, it's always great to sketch with a glass of wine, it, you'll relax more and, and have a, um, usually it's a little more successful for me if I relax, but I did this quick sketch of the view from their outdoor tasting room, which is gorgeous, looking at the Mustang Mountains. I put a, a, a this is a, a yucca right in the foreground, the yuccas on the nearest hill, and then the Mustangs in the distance, you'll notice those I made a, a warmer blues, even though in reality they were very much similar color to everything else. I wanted to make sure that my little landscape showed that receding into the distance so that warmer colors recede, brighter, cooler colors jump forward. So I did those mountains with a very pale and damp throne blue, the, the dark blue, and just a tiny bit of color to show. And so that gives my sketch depth. If I did it all the same color, they would be the, it would look like they were all in the same plane of existence. So that's just little, little tips to, to help you out there. Let's see how this has dried. Yeah, that's dried pretty well. That's pretty bright. Uh, I like it though. It gives me a sense of, of what the, the landscape was like. You can tell those mountains are farther away because they're pushed way back. Uh, and the detail of the nobilies and the beautiful dragoons. So I really, I really think this, this captured it well. So that was my, my demo for how to do quick landscapes. Uh, let's, let's recap those five Five things one more time. Uh, remember to, you are capturing the essence, not copying exactly. You want to look for the big shapes. So in this scene, there were really only, I would say one big shape, the, the grassland, two, the, the tree, three were these mountains. So right now, you know, that's showing us kind of uh, two separate ones because of the color, but when I sketched them, it was one big shape. So really, in the sky, if you want to count that, but that ends up, you're not really sketching that. Uh, so look for those shapes, map it out with dots first so you get your proportions the way you like them, and then go for your sketches using sketchy lines. Try not to be really, really um, tight and static. Don't hunch over your notebook. Try to draw with your, your hand and elbow loose. Um, you see these, um, so a lot of art teachers will, will say, sketch with your whole arm, but honestly, that's really just for studio work, right? Where you have a giant easel. Um, you can't do that with a nature notebook. However, you can loosen up, you know, don't, don't do it this way, with all hunched over, or it will really show that, that tightness will show. Um, try to, to keep yourself loose and, and not a death grip on your, your drawing instrument. And don't forget to 
stop and don't overwork it. So that's, that's the, the big tips there. Right, so I hope that that ended up giving you a little bit more idea of how, of how to approach landscape sketching. On my website, exploringoverland.com slash field arts, you can find tutorials and a lot more examples of, of landscape sketching, more videos, uh, but this should get you going and help you be a little bit more comfortable with the daunting task of doing landscapes. Um, if you have questions, since this is a recording, please, um, you, can, you can post the questions on this video on my website, as I just said, find that on my website, or this should link to Vimeo. My Vimeo account is vimeo.com slash exploring overland and put the questions in the comments and I'll take a look and, and answer them or feel free to email me. You can, you can find me at my email on, on my website. So thank you very much. Thank you, Bethan and the International Nature Journaling Week people. It's been so much fun. I hope you had fun too.